Hey everybody, welcome back to my shop. And today, we're gonna turn this little tobacco pipe. Now, I would never advise anybody to use any type of tobacco product. It's probably not a good idea. But I'd also like to highlight that there's a very big difference between cigarettes and pipes and cigars. Cigarettes, you inhale the smoke, they're very addictive, and they're obviously very dangerous. Pipes and cigars, you do not inhale the smoke. You're meant to taste it and take a few moments of your time to enjoy yourself. They're obviously still not 100% safe, but I thought I'd just point out that little difference. You don't need to worry too much about me. But anyways, please remember, this is not an instructional video and is meant for entertainment purposes only. Your safety is your responsibility, so let's get started. Let's go over the materials we're gonna to use to make this pipe. For the stem, we're gonna use this acrylic acetate pen blank, and for the stemmel, we're gonna use what's called briar wood. Now, briar is by far the best wood for making pipes because it's very hard, it's very light, it's very burn resistant and it wicks away moisture really well also. So it's kind of got a magical combination of characteristics. Now it comes from the white heath or heather tree which grows around the Mediterranean Sea and the tree gets an infection in its root base and then over the next 50 to 100 or more years a burl is formed as the tree tries to fight the infection. Now many different countries produce this wood and so we've got some from Spain, we got from um, Italy, Greece, and they all kind of have a little bit different color to them. This one is Algerian briar, and so it's kind of got more of a dark orange reddish color. Now this wood's very expensive. This block would be about $35 Canadian, and there's no guarantee it's going to be a good piece of wood either, because there's what's called sand pits throughout these things, and if one of those sand pits runs into a very critical area, the wood's no good. So it's a bit of a risk and it's very expensive, but there's nothing that compares to it for pipe making. So we're gonna start out by making the stummel. So let's go over a little diagram so you can see what we're trying to achieve. So here's our stummel. And the main things to kind of think about is that this is the tobacco chamber where the tobacco is actually burned. And it's, the smoke is drawn through here down what's called the draft hole and then out into the stem. This is a little mortise for the tenon from the stem to fit into. Now the main most important thing about any pipe is that the tobacco chamber terminates bottom dead center with this draft hole. If you have the tobacco chamber too high, then that draft hole is like a little nook where little juices can kind of run into and kind of build up into a sticky mess. And if you drill too deep, then you get a little pit in the bottom that the tobacco will never get burned. So we got to make sure that the very bottom of this tobacco chamber meets the very bottom of this draft hole. That's why I made this draft hole the width of what the draft hole will actually, actually be, which is about, I think it's about 5 30 seconds of an inch. And so I'm going to transfer this onto our actual block of wood. Then I'm going to cut out some of the wood to relieve a little bit of what we have to do for turning. But I'm going to leave a big block down here where the actual block is going to be chucked up from. So I'll come back from the bandsaw and we'll have her chucked up. So and I transferred the pattern over and I went over to the bandsaw and relieved some of the wood away. And then I traced on the drilling lines that we have to follow. Now this is a self-centering chuck so we don't have to worry about drilling um, dead center this way because it's self-centered. It'll always drill to the center. But what we have to do is line up these lines really well. And that's why I traced this line all the way to the end here. Because what we're going to do is we're going to put it in the chuck and line the line up with the chuck jaws and then bring a live center up to this line to make sure that it's all aiming right for that dead center. Now you can see we're all in line and we're ready to start drilling. So first we'll prep the surface of this for drilling so that we have a nice flat surface with an impression to start in. Just using my little Robert Sorby sweatback grind. RPM's at about 1200 and something. Nice light cuts. We're only holding on by a couple little jaws. Okay, we're now going to drill a 5 16th inch shallow mortise. So I've got the speed turned down just a little bit. Oop. 
want to make sure this drill is very good and straight. It's very important. So we're backing it out, clearing any extra shavings. This is very, very important. Precise drilling. Very nice and clean. So next we're going to drill the draft hole and I've got this marked to a depth that the outer wings of the flute will hit dead center of that tobacco chamber. So let's do that one next. Now drilling with these long narrow drill bits can sometimes be a bit of an issue because they tend to wander off a little bit. But here's a tip I got from Anthony Harris. By the way, check him out on YouTube. Um, what he says is as you plunge in with the tailstock, slightly twist your drill chuck so as it tries to maybe wander off course you're trying to get it to kind of correct itself back i don't know it actually does seem to work so we don't have the drill chuck locked into the tailstock we have it just seated in there so it's nice and straight but not jammed so try this at your own risk but let's give it a go okay so i'm going to bring it in let it center itself see a little bit of a shimmy now we're going to plunge in while turning. Okay, so you see the shimmy hasn't really increased, so it is kind of working. And we're going to back out. If it goes off by a, a little hair, it's not going to be a big issue because we're not that far off from the tobacco chamber already. We're, we only have to drill about an inch, so it's not going to go too far in that little distance. But you see how it's not getting any worse? It's just a tiny little shimmy. So I'll just keep doing this. Now that the drilling's all complete, we can now start to shape the end of the shank. What I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of a chamfer here, or a little taper on the inside of this uh, mortise so that when you put the tenon in there it goes in nice and easy you're not fighting a little sharp edge and then we'll put the tailstock up here that's it that's all you need that little tiny little chamfer now we'll bring up the tailstock speed back up to 1200 let's do a little bit of shaping Okay, that's coming along pretty nicely. Look at the grain coming out, eh? Oh, I love briarwood. I'm going to just check this measurement and see if I need to take any more. Give a little more curve to her. There, I think that looks pretty good. You can see there's a little sand pit right there. I think we got lucky, we missed that one. It's not, doesn't look too big. Okay, so we can now move on to drilling the tobacco chamber. Actually just gonna do some real quick light sanding in here, just before we move it around. I'll save you that boring Just gonna stuff. do the same lining up procedure again I like to wiggle it so it gets nice and set in those jaws we got our line on the top here just going to prep the top again Okay, 
nice and smooth. When I first started making tobacco pipes, I had bought one of these rounded over spade bits. It's kind of like a mock spoon bit. I had bought one of these off a pipe making supply site and they work, but boy, they're a little rough. What I find is a lot better is if you got a round nose scraper, you can take this thing and just chuck it right in the garbage. Sorry if that was loud. And just get your round nose scraper out, get it nice and sharp, and just plunge it straight in like a drill bit and get to your right depth. But make sure as you go along that this edge is super sharp because if you can get a nice clean cut then it leaves a really smooth surface which is really important when you uh, want to season the bowl properly with your first few first few bowlfuls. So we're going to get this going here. I got the tool set at pretty much dead center. Maybe I'll raise her up just a hair. Not much. And here we go. I have it marked for where I'm going to probably hit the top of that uh, draft hole and then I can start getting a little more precise by stopping and starting. Get a little bit of vibration, not too bad. The trick is keeping it dead center. We'll be able to hear when we actually hit the draft hole. Part of the vibration problem was uh, solved by turning the speed down a bit. It's coming in a little too hot. There we go, nice clean shavings now. Sometimes you hit some really twisted grain that's just hard to cut. Now it's gotten actually a little easier. Okay, I think we just hit the draft hole. Yep. We're just starting to pierce it. I see just a little opening. So now I gotta be very, oops, sorry. I gotta be very, very careful. Very careful. <laughs> Looks like we're right on target. This is looking good. Okay, I'm gonna show you where we're at so far, because we have a little ways to go yet, but we're nearly there. Please excuse my extremely shaky hands, but as you can see, we're starting to see a bit of daylight come through the bottom there. But you see, it's not terminated at the very bottom of the bottom of the draft hole. So we gotta go a little further. Nice sharp tool. We might be there. Just a little bit further. Oh. Okay. Quit shaking hands. So you can feel the bumping as it passes over the draft hole, but it goes away little by little. And we're just about there. Oh. I'm going to call that bang on. So you see we have the bottom of the tobacco chamber terminating at the bottom of the draft hole. So now the tobacco can burn straight down to the bottom. Now I'm just going to take a couple light passes, not at the bottom, but just down the side, just to clean up a few of those little uh, tool marks from the uh, harmonics coming through. There, that's pretty nice and clean. I won't even touch that with the, the sand. <clears throat> I won't even touch that with the sandpaper inside there because the grain is left nice and open. And then when you go to have your first few smokes, it'll season the inside of that bowl and start creating a nice cake layer that's a kind of like a buffer zone between the wood and the uh, burning embers, kind of like seasoning on a cast iron pan. So as you see, I got a little bit of a pit down here in the bottom, or at the, I mean the very top of the tobacco chamber. There's very little heat up there, so I'm not concerned about it at all. It'll probably just get covered over with cake eventually. 
and the rest of it looks really clean. So we lucked out. This is a really good piece of wood. So now what we're going to do is bring up the... Um, I'm going to shape this. Yeah, I'm going to bring up the live center, round it over, then we'll shape the rim and shape the pipe. Bring her back up at 1800 RPM. Check how far we're going. See, we got to be careful. We're going to get close to this stem down here. That's where all that little handwork is going to have to come into play. The tool's sharp, but I'm going to sharpen it up anyway. And that's pretty much as far as we're going to be able to get on this side of things. Just going to do a little light shear scraping in here. So I wanted to add a little profile to the rim a little bit, but uh, that sand pit might be causing us problems for that. But you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and do it anyway because I had a vision and I'm going to see if I can achieve it. If we have problems, we'll deal with them. Kind of more what I was aiming for. I'm gonna clean this up. Okay, I just sanded the very, very top and I left the side because that's gonna take a lot of hand work. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it over to the bandsaw and make a few little cuts to get rid of more of this wood. I'm not gonna show that because it's probably not gonna be the safest of procedures. And then I think what I'm actually gonna to try to do is bring it back to the lathe and put it into a jam chuck to do that little cone shape to the bottom. So. I'm going to go ahead to the bandsaw and we'll be back, hopefully, with a jam chuck. I glued up a little piece of wood down here so that that live center wouldn't leave too much of an impression in the bottom of the actual scummel there, so let's get some shaping done. Okay, so I'm going to work all this extra stuff down here with some hand tools. I'm going to use probably my Dremel. I got this little round rasps thing, even a file. Probably wrap some sandpaper on a block of wood. <laughs> hand sanding. I'm going to throw everything at it, but we're going to put you in high speed because it's going to be a bit time consuming. Okay, so actually that wasn't so bad. The Dremel took care of that pretty quickly. I'm just going to move on to hand sanding now and refine that surface, get that nice even curve. And to get in little tight areas, I'll probably just take a nail and wrap sandpaper around it a couple times and get all those areas kind of refined as well. So I'm going to do that off camera because it's just going to be a long, boring process. That last step was probably long enough as it was, so we'll come back when it's ready to start putting some wax to it. So I sanded it with 150, 220, 320, 400, 600, and I even buffed it with some steel wool because the wood was coming out so nicely. So now I'm going to go ahead and buff it with some Tripoli before we buff on some Carnuba wax.
Figure's really starting to pop out now. We can really see the grain popping out now once we've got that wax all buffed on there. So I'm probably going to buff a little bit more on before the end of the project, but next thing we're going to do is work our way onto the stem. So off camera, I took that pen blank that we're going to use to make the stem, and I cut it down to length and rounded it over, and I've got it chucked up. And what we're first going to do is work on the end of the stem that's going to go into the pipe. So we're going to drill it out first and then form a tenon. So, I got the speed low and slow, so here we go. Here's a little tip, when you bring it up there, don't lock your tailstock and then use the quill to push it in. Just lightly press it in and it'll help find its own center, then lock the tailstock down. Now use the quill. There's always a little bit of play. There's always a little bit of play in the tailstock, so if you let it kind of center itself, you'll have a lot easier time making those nice straight drillings. And I don't want to plunge too much at a time with this stuff. That hole we just drilled is the perfect size to match this mandrel on this tenon making jig. The tenon has to be extremely precise to have the right fit and so if you don't have a metal lathe to accomplish that precision then you're going to need something like this tenon making jig to uh, accomplish that. So I've got the depth marked out with this little line here that's probably hard to see. We're going to try to do this in one nice clean plunge, although I'm going to test fit it right off the bat. Let's see if that's going to fit. That seems about right. Just gonna put just a little taper here. Just like that. Now we can give it a test fit. And she seems a little tight, but that's okay because what we're going to do is just lightly hit it with the 600 grit sandpaper to make sure there's no little tool marks or ridges. And then we're going to buff it yet um, once we're done shaping the stem. And honestly, when you're buffing it, you can fine tune the fit on these pretty good. So I'm going to wait for that to really dial it in. I'm not going to cut it any further. So let's go and do some turning on this now. Now the draft hole in the stumble is just slightly larger than this hole. So what I'm going to do is add just a little taper to this so that that smoke, the airflow is nice and smooth. It'll keep it from having a whistle or an odd draw or anything like that. There, just like that. Now on all the previous pipes I've made in the past, I've always had a smooth transition from the stem to the stumble. Maybe I'll throw a picture in here. But on this one I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to kind of make like a faux push stem shape, where it looks like the stem just gets pushed straight into the stumble. Push stem? Spigot? I can't remember what it's called. But anyways, let's do a little bit of shaping. Let's take our time. I am going to leave a little bit of a shoulder right there so that it doesn't act as a wedge when it gets pushed into the pipe. That little shoulder will help stabilize it and keep you from trying to push a wedge into the pipe and cracking it.
Okay, I'm just going to quickly sand this off camera and then we'll flip her around. Actually, before we flip it around, I'm going to drill just a little bit deeper with the next size bit, which is just a, a hair smaller yet. Now, what I'm installing on the lathe right now is my call it chuck made by Beal. And so that's going to allow us to hold this other side by the tenon without scuffing it up too badly. This way we can drill it from this other end now. Drilling's all complete. Now I'm just going to reduce the uh, diameter of this a little bit, maybe create a little bit of a taper for an outline for myself, and then we'll be back to using some hand tools. I'm going to do some uh, refining sanding with 220 grit and I've just uh, used some spray adhesive to glue a little strip to a piece of scrap wood. This will give me nice control and help me keep a little flatter of a surface. So the sanding's all complete, which is quite a lengthy process, but if you take your time you can get some pretty accurate results. You can put little details in like this little bit up here to help it, help it stay in your teeth. I put a little bit of a backwards taper on it just to kind of, you know, add some pizzazz to it. Anyways, I'm going to cut a little slot in the front of this thing, which will help spread the tobacco smoke out as it comes out, as tobacco is for tasting. Not sure how well you can see that, but I was aiming for actually a little bit more narrow of a slot. But, you know what? This will do just okay. I'm going to just use a little folded up piece of sandpaper. And I'm just going to clean up the inside of that so that it's nice and smooth. Keeps it easy to clean. Now I'm just going to buff the stem with the Tripoli. She's nice and shiny now. I've got the tenon now fitting really good, but I'm still just going to rub a little bit of beeswax on it just to help it slide on and off. And it's my belief that when you put a pipe stem into a pipe, you should twist and you should actually twist clockwise because the drilling process is in the clockwise direction as well. So those fibers have probably gotten laid over flat while drilling. And so you want to keep going in the same direction. Wood's going to do what it wants to, so it's best to work with it. But there we go. I think we're going to do one last little fine tuning. And that's going to be just to put a very slight bend in this. So it kind of almost hits the same kind of plane as the top of the bowl. But how's it looking so far? Is it an okay style? Does it look good or is it kind of ridiculous? <laughs> Before we put the bend in I just want to show that nice, straight, clear path into the tobacco chamber. See that? Perfect, nice, open draft hole. So I've just got some boiling hot water here. So we're going to soak the stem in there. And you'll see I've got a pipe, uh, pipe cleaner in the end of the stem. And that's just so I um, don't collapse the draft hole in the process here. So might have to rebuff the pipe if the pipe gets a little bit too steamy from the, the boiling water. But the carnauba wax is pretty hard stuff. So you see, I can just lightly bend it I think there's some people partying outside weather must be getting better eh now you got to make sure as you do this that you get it just right don't kink it off to one way or the other or you're going to be looking at that forever well until you fix it There, I'm just going to rebuff the pipe up there, but see that just that tiny little bit of a bend makes all the difference. By the way, what do you think of it? Is the stem a little bit too heavy maybe up in this section? 
I was trying to balance out the pipe a little bit, but that's the nice thing about this push stem style is that if I don't like the stem after a while, I can just turn a new one because I don't have to have it even with the shank. It's just a push stem. So we'll see how it turns out. Now I don't use the burning pen to sign my name on pipes because it might interrupt and hide the grain pattern. So I'm going to use this little mini punch set instead. They're two millimeter in height. I just got to take my time and make sure that I kind of follow these little lines formed by the duct tape. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this, but this works for me. There, it's not perfect, but you can read it. Can you see it? Thanks for tuning into this week's video. If you liked the video, please click the like button and share it around. If you have any questions or suggestions for me, please fire those off in the comments section down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do for more videos in the future. So thank you very much. Have yourself a great day and God bless.